Fannie Willis has two new challengers in 2024, adding another political dynamic to this whole equation. And we already talked about Judge Scott McAfee also has a contender. And does that change the equation? Does this now put pressure on Judge McAfee? Does this cause Fannie Willis to say something different or do something different now that maybe the people of Fulton County are going to be throwing her out on her butt too? We'll see. But we do have new players entering the game, and we're going to meet both of these people, including Christian Wise Smith. We're also going to see Courtney Kramer, these two new candidates who are challenging the biggest Fannie in Georgia. Do they know what they're in for? I don't think so. Here is the background from Atlanta Journal Constitution. They say Fannie's facing two new challengers in her re-election bid. Bid, uh uh-oh. Her critics are trying to make her pay a price at the ballot box for her election interference case against former President Trump. I think it's also more than that though. They're not trying to make her pay a price just for that RICO case. Like, yeah, that's a problem, obviously. But it's a little bit more than that. It has to also do with the fact that she was indicting her special prosecutor and grifting $700,000 off the taxpayers of Fulton County and Georgia. So they say this is now something, they throw that in there, and her past relationship with the deputy. (laughs) It's like an afterthought. They just kind of tuck it in there. Her critics try to make her pay a price for her prosecution of Trump for interfering with the election and his allies and also her past relationship with Nathan Wade. Christian Wise Smith, who I have a video from, said he plans to qualify to challenge Big Fanny in a Democratic primary on May 21, but he hasn't yet formally filed the paperwork to do that. He is a progressive, a former prosecutor, former city solicitor. He finished in third place to Willis in 2020 in the race and waged a failed campaign for AG in 2022. So he's already run a couple times and lost. Now, meanwhile, Courtney Kramer, she also filed paperwork to run for the seat as a Republican. A LinkedIn page that matched her description indicated she worked as a litigation consultant for Trump's legal team. All right and the 2020 election and helped handle other election related matters for the state GOP legislatures and the Georgia Republican Party. She could not be immediately reached for comment. Now, Willis is the odds on favorite. Fulton County is a very blue county, Democrat stronghold, so the Republicans obviously not gonna win. She's one of the most recognizable political figures in the state, if not the nation. Yeah, of course she is because she was indicting her lover. She has the advantage of incumbency and has amassed a small fortune in her campaign account. Wild, because apparently she's like a hero to people. But Weiss, Smith, and Kramer could still present a political headache by trying to turn the race into a proxy fight over the Trump case. And they could bring more scrutiny to Willis's relationship with her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, the lovebirds. That's at the center of this disqualification effort. Wise Smith received about 23% of the Democratic vote back in the primary. He ran on a platform that included vows to no longer seek the death penalty, eliminate cash bail, decriminalize drug possession. He went on to endorse Paul Howard in the runoff, saying he was troubled that Willis had got support of the Atlanta Police Union. Willis easily defeated Howard, a six-term incumbent, in a head-to-head runoff. And in the wake of the racial justice protests, yeah, the summer of love, fiery but mostly peaceful, after George Floyd's murder, or, you know, you might say his collapsed heart because it was filled with arteriosclerosis, hypertension, fentanyl, COVID, marijuana, everything. Anyways, Weiss Smith also advocated for shifting criminal justice strategies, including moving away from overcharging cases. And he also endorsed a restorative justice approach. It's the weirdest thing for prosecutors to be like arguing to release criminal. It's topsy-turvy world that we're in. Weird as a defense attorney. It's like not how I came up. Our prosecutors were like, your guy, look at the methamphetamine. Okay, but he didn't touch it or sniff it or look at it or lick it or sell it or anything. But he looked at it. Yeah, but that's not illegal. Like, yeah, it is. Death penalty. It was like, sheesh, relax, psychos. That whole thing has changed very quickly. Not in Arizona, but in a lot of other places. So wild. And including Fannie Willis, remember that she said that they were trying to train her staff to deviate defendants in front of black male judges who are not Republicans because they get lighter sentences. What are they doing? Anyways, two years later, in the Democrat primary for attorney general, Y. Smith was crushed by then Senator Jen Jordan, and Kramer appears have also to have worked for other people as well. Willis told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution she is unconcerned by the challenge. Says, this is a democracy we live in, so people have a right to run for office, but they should come prepared for a fight. They should know my heart is still in this work. My heart will continue continue to be in this work. You know, something's in that work over there. Anyway, so, all right, that's who these people are. Let's watch a little bit more about them. We've got some videos queued up to hear from them. And this is Willis, Christian Wise Smith, who 
is running to compete against Willis, talking about new filings in the Georgia case on MSNBC. Well, first reaction, this is, I think, to be expected, right? The prosecution is going to do everything they can to make sure that they get all of their evidence admitted. And so you're going to see a lot of people connected to Trump who may look like surprise guests, but they may be very, very vital when they're getting certain pieces of evidence admitted. And we're going to see a lot of conflicts of interest. We see one of the attorneys, Steve Grubber, attorney Grubman, for example, who represented Raffensperger at one point is now a chess bars attorney. So it's going to be interesting to see how the judge rules on that, whether or not he can continue to be the attorney for Chessboro. There are certainly a lot of conflicts of interest. Fanny's got a pretty big one. So that's one clip. Let's take a look at one other one and see what else he had to say. And this is where they're talking about that grand juror. Remember that grand juror, Elizabeth Kors, I believe her name, or Emily Kors, I think was her name. And she was out just strange, very excited about her role, kind of like wanted Trump to, you know, be like the president so he could come in and I could, you know, ask him a question and he could. What do you think you're on? Like a reality TV show or something, lady? Relax. So they brought him on to ask about this. Here's what that sounded like. In County, Georgia, he also ran against Fonnie Willis in the Democratic primary for DA in 2020. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right, first, let me just get your reaction to all these interviews that she's doing. I wish she would not have done this. The grand but, juror. I mean, everything around former President Donald Trump seems to be always in the media, always a circus, always along these lines. Let me ask you this. Is it illegal what she's doing or is it just improper? I mean, she's skating on a very thin line. I'm pretty sure the judge gave a gag order about not Remember divulging her? any of the information that took place in the special grand jury proceedings. And she's being very careful not to discuss specific things that they talked about in those rooms or, or specific things in a report. So I think very much improper. I think it's a fine line about whether or not she's doing anything illegal right now. I All right. So that is another exchange from him. Nothing too fiery on either of those. I think they're kind of just, you know, benign statements. This one was a little bit more interesting. This one was captured by Phil Holloway. Phil Holloway says that Mr. Smith, Christian Y. Smith, also posted this somewhere. And shout out to our friend Phil Holloway doing some great reporting recently and a great follow and great analysis. He's over at Phil Holloway ESQ doing some great work. And he posted this. He says, you know, Mr. Smith is here. He's campaigning on calling out white supremacy. He said it's time for a Fulton DA who focuses on actual crime that Fulton County residents care about. Is that white supremacy going on? So he says, we need leaders who aren't afraid to call out white supremacy. If we want different, we have to vote different. Justice for all Georgia politician. Well, maybe he'll beat Big Fanny. You know, maybe that's like the ticket. Yeah, white supremacy. Yeah, down with white supremacists. So, all right, that's that guy. Now, he might have a fighting shot, you know, if Fanny is taken out by this scandal, if they even care about that there in Fulton. But here is the other contender who probably is not going to, you know, go very far as a Republican in this county, but definitely has some good takes on what's been happening. Her name is Courtney Kramer, and she's been around on some of the inner tubes and interwebs. And on this show, she was on with John Friedrichs on Outside the Beltway over on Real America's Voice. And here is what some of that conversation sounded like when she was reacting to this case. Here. John, like I said, she spent two and a half years on this investigation. She had to do something. You know, she had to convene a grand jury. She had to, you know, push that grand jury, in my opinion, to bring these charges. I thought it was interesting yesterday in her press conference that she said everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But I think that the way the media has portrayed this, they have basically painted everybody as guilty. And that is not how the rule of law is supposed to work. That's not how our justice system works. I think that this is a complete dereliction of duty. I think it is going to create a chilling effect on anybody who challenges an election properly and under the Georgia election code, like President Trump did. And it also begs the question of why is Bonnie Willis bringing this? If you look at Arizona and Michigan, the attorney generals in both of those states brought the lawsuits against their electors for challenging the election. So why Bonnie and why now? I think that in the coming months, she said that she wants to try to have this trial within six months. I think that that's absolutely unrealistic. There's going to be a ton of motions that are going to be filed, barring whichever judge is actually it was a political hit. Case up. I think you're going to see a lot of evidence come out in the coming months, in the coming year, that is going to vindicate all of these defendants. And I think what they did was proper. They did it with authority. And what they did is they stood up for freedom. And I think that this just shows Pretty that good. the left is persecuting every Republican they can, any conservative they can, just to try to win. And this is a absolute expansion of RICO. Let's just be real. There's never been a former president, a president, or anybody that's been indicted under RICO for election charges. That's absolutely unfathomable, in my opinion. But I think that this once discovery starts happening, you're going to see some of these communications coming out, these emails coming out. What happened during 
during that time. And I think you're going to see that what happened with David Schaefer and with President Trump and with everybody involved, what they did was lawful. Great hit right there. Well done. Courtney Kramer. And that clip was some time ago. That was an August 15, 2023 clip. Pretty prescient, as they say, able to prognosticate what was coming. And I think she's dead right about it. A lot of what we've seen here is not even criminal. I mean, we had a couple plea deals, four of them actually, that were all diversion deals. There are going to be no convictions for Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis, all right? Two of the people who were paraded around on TV day in and day out. No convictions for them? Hmm. Yeah, because these cases are a joke. Because these two, Nathan and Wade and Fanny Willis, were out there indicting each other at all hours of the night, going to Belize, Napa Valley, all over the place, having a lot of fun while they were grifting off of the taxpayers. Now, in Georgia, we got Biden and Trump both appearing to make their pitch to voters. Here is a bit of a report from the local Time now news. is 6.15. This morning, plans are being finalized for President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump's campaign stops in Georgia this weekend. The events are ahead of next week's primary. President Biden will be in Metro Atlanta, although a specific location hasn't been released just yet. Mr. Trump will be in Rome. Former President Trump has all but locked in his spot now as the Republican That's nominee right. Bye, after Nikki. Nikki Haley dropped out of the race. Nikki's out of here. And let's see. Nominees seemingly in place. You may be wondering what's the point of voting in Georgia's primary. But Emory Exercise Political Science votes. Professor Dr. Andre Gillespie Build says there is still a lot riding on our state. Yeah, Georgia. Both candidates are here. Both are contesting for the state, which was narrowly won by President Biden Stolen. in 2020. And Water so both of them breaks. are showing that they care an awful lot about okay. Georgia and that they see winning these states as actually vital to their overall electoral college plan. Early voting ends tomorrow, Election Day, next Tuesday, March 12th. You can read about... All right, Georgians, get out there and vote. And that's going to be for the primary, the presidential primary. And then I think there is a different primary for the judge and for Fannie and all the others later on. But that is what's happening in Georgia. And we're keeping close eyes on what's happening there. Of course, yesterday, we were all a little bit, you know, let down. We all got a little fannied. We got fannied on the show yesterday after the Board of Ethics canceled their meeting when we were here trying to live stream that puppy. And our friend Viva, who is right next door on YouTube at Viva Fry and on Locals at Viva Barn law.locals.com and on Rumble, all the places he was just stopping by and he happened to catch the moment of pain and the moment of horror that we all experienced. And Viva had a great, great follow-up on this. So the question really, if you watch the full video, the question that we had from Viva was why was that board of ethics hearing canceled? It was canceled as Viva said, because they actually didn't have jurisdiction. And he explained the whole thing and he was watching us while we were here getting ready to stream the hearing. And here's what he says about this. This. Here's Viva. Suspicious and favorable to Fannie Willis having these two ethics complaints dropped the day if they were supposed to be live streamed as well. And I was watching Robert Gouveia watching the watchers as he was about to stream this. And I could literally see the moment his heart broke when he got the news from Atlantic News First, or whoever was reporting the news that the hearing was actually canceled because these two complaints were removed from the docket for the reasons given, which seemed to check out. And Doug Reardon. Wow. Look at this. Okay, my friends, it might be canceled. Doug Reardon says the Fulton County Board of Ethics was set to hear two citizen complaints against Fannie Willis today at 10 a.m. When we showed up, here Doug Reardon is there. He is a reporter from ATL News First, and he says, when we showed up, we were told the complaints were abruptly removed from the agenda. What you say? Now, I don't know what code of ethics applies to district attorneys or how one would file an ethics complaint against Fannie Willis if one were so inclined, but I'm sure whoever is so inclined will find that answer somewhere. But at the very least, we know the story is not total caca. It smells a little fishy and corruption is one hell of a drug, not even once. And politics is a dirty business filled with corruption. But at the very least, the story seems to make sense. Lucky Fanny. Lucky Fanny, indeed. Okay, so shout out to Viva. I was laughing my little caboose off yesterday because that's how I felt. And you know, that right there. You can can see it. You can see the pain in my eyes. You can see it in the cheek. I was hurt. I got fannied, man. We all got fannied. Uh. So my friends, you know, we'll try not to let that happen here. We try to avoid that. Try not to get into that, you know, too often, but it happens. We all felt it, man. We all got it. I know. It was all of us together. I know we're all in it together. We did it. Anyway, so shout out to our friend Viva, my friends. We, of course, are going to be covering this as well. All of the election litigation, all of the election challengers taking place in Georgia, we'll be here covering it. Thank you for checking out our channel. Thanks for subscribing. Subscribe my friends, and we'll see you back here on the next one.